Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship together today. As we open the sacred book, we ask for your Holy Spirit in this place and in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. But thanks be to God who give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The way the Eskimos hunt the wolves give us an idea of how the enemy tries to catch us. They use a sharp knife, cover it with seal blood, and let it freeze. And this is repeated over and over again. They put the knife in the ground where the wolves appear, the wolf arrives and smells. Look what I found. The wolf starts licking and keep licking. Oh, this is delicious. Soon, the knife edge is exposed. The wolf tongue is numb by the cold. He does not realize what is happening. The wolf begins to cut its own tongue, does not feel its warm blood. He continues and continues until he has no more strength and then dies. It is something extremely cruel what happened to these creatures. And this is a clear illustration about the strategy of Satan and demons to get our attention, numb and destroy us. We have all experienced the power of temptation. We see something that we want, and even though we know that it is not good for us, but we go after it anyway. And the next things, you know, we are caught in the snare of the enemy. The other day, we saw a little girl in front of a well-known store on a table where a small plastic bottles of jars with soapy water to make bubbles. The little girl saw everywhere and could not resist the temptation to take one of those small bottles. But when she took it, the bottle slipped from her hands and scattered on the floor. She quickly pick it up and again, seeing everywhere, she covered it and put it back in his place. With my wife, we just turned to each other and smiled. Only a few days ago, we were greatly blessed 
with the messages that Pastor Avi shared with us, our church and our spiritual life were strengthened. Good decisions were made. It is not surprising that lately we have been tempted to neglect our devotional life. Tempted to neglect praising the name of the Lord. Tempted to neglect the study of the Bible. Tempted to neglect prayer and tempted to neglect sharing the love of Jesus with others. Because this is the only way we can stay strong in Christian life. The more we want or wish and decide to be faithful to Jesus, the stronger the temptations will be. The battle, brothers and sisters, is real. I want to invite you to look in your Bibles, in the book of Daniel, chapter 10. Verses 12 and 13. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your wars were heard, and I have come because of your wars. Verse 13. But the prince of this kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. There was a situation where Daniel was mourning and fasting three weeks. It has been suggested that the problem was about the rebuilding of the temple which has been stopped by the intervention of the Samaritans. During those three weeks, Gabriel and his superior, Michael, one of the chief princes, have been fighting with the king of Persia. And we know that the king of Persia on those particular days was Cambyses, son of King Cyrus. Obviously, there is something else here. It is a symbol of the evil angel. We are talking about invisible forces. Here we have invisible forces and we are also involved. But thanks to God, in chapter 12 and verse 1, we find Michael and his people victorious. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands, watch over the son of your people. Michael and his church, 
Michael and his people victorious. We can also go to 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6 and verses 15 to 17. The Syrian army is coming to catch Elisha. And we read in verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant says to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And then we read in the next verse. So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And then, what was happening? What was happening here? We can read now the next verse, 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord open the eyes of the young men and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha God revealed God revealed to them that he was ready to to fight for them. We cannot see it, but heavenly armies are near, around us, to protect us and defend us. Praise the Lord for this. We find also in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and verses 3 to 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3, 4, and 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We are involved in a battle, but we have nothing to fear. We have the most powerful weapons in God. Many do not believe this wonderful truth, and sometimes they make jokes about temptation. Like this message in this church, church, I can resist everything except temptation. I hear a young man say, My life goes from failure to 
Fela. Sadly, I also remember a young man in El Salvador who made the sad decision to enter into the world of drugs. The meetings of the small Adventist church that was starting in that town were held in his home. One Christmas day, he managed to return home despite having an overdose, but sadly, that was the last night in his life. A very sad story. I also remember another young man in Panama who, having been baptized and having enjoyed the atmosphere of the church, he decided to accept a security job where he had to work on Saturdays. He always thought about going back to church, but he didn't until the day when he was checking his firearm, his gun, with a word mate the gun accidentally shot and killed him. He returned to church, but in a coffin. I remember that I had to give the news to his mother. It has been one of the hardest things I have had to do in my life. I have seen many young people with great talents and with good intentions, but countless traps of the enemy catch them up. Time goes by and they are still trapped. Precious lives wasted. The Bible teaches that we don't have to lose the battle again and again. Every day we can be victorious. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we read in verses 12 and 13, First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. We are all tempted. And when we talk about temptation, we can say, it is not only the opportunity to do something wrong or something bad, but to have the desire to do it. What is temptation for someone may not be for another. Experiencing the desire to do something wrong or bad is temptation. But being tempted is not in itself a sin. It is said 
of Jesus was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. This is why he can sympathize with our weaknesses. And I say, praise the Lord for this. Brothers and sisters, we can overcome every temptation. When someone says, I cannot stop doing it, doing it. When someone says, I am addicted, I have fallen too low. These are lies of Satan. Because God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Brothers and sisters, friends, when we fortify our spiritual life with prayer, with Bible study, with worship, with service, and a heart full of the Holy Spirit, we will find that temptations do not have the power to destroy that they once had. It will be a different story. I want to encourage you this morning to follow your personal devotional plan. Individually, uh, I like, for example, to read every day one chapter of the Old Testament, one chapter of the Psalms, of Proverbs, and one chapter of the New Testament. I enjoy doing that, and I love to see how the Bible connects from one uh, stream to the, to the other, including the Psalms and Proverbs. My plan for next year is to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John together with the book, The Saya of Ages. And probably you can do the same like me. If you need a, a guide, I can take a copy. I, I got one and share it with you. Actually, my wife is doing that during this week. And I have seen her enjoying more and more reading the, the, the Bible and growing in faith. We have to do something. What we had two weeks ago was wonderful, was amazing. But we cannot lose that amazing spirit. We have to renovate it every day in our lives. Of course, there are many devotional plans. You can choose one, but please do it. Follow one of those with prayer. And you will see, you will experience the difference in your Christian lives. God promises to lead us to victory. We read in Corinthians the message of Paul using the phrase, the way of escape. The idea is that of an army, apparently surrounded by the enemy, and then suddenly an escape route opens. Wow! That is what God does for us. It gives us the power to go in another direction and to do the opposite of what temptation wanted us to do. God is really great. We can also have a look in Deuteronomy chapter 20. I love this 
a Bible verse or verses. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 1 and 4. Look what the Lord says. When you go out to the battle against your enemies, he's talking about his people, Israel. But this message is also for you, it's also for me. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you. This is amazing. And uh, then in verse 4. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. This is an amazing promise. From God, and it is for you. Let's reclaim, let's claim this promise in our lives every day. Do not be afraid. The Lord your God is with you, is with me. With the power of God, that power that brought all things to ex into existence with the power that divided the Red Sea and performed so many wonders, with that power dwelling in us by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we can choose not to sin. The enemy cannot force us to sin. I thank God for all those of you who walk with Jesus every day and full of his Holy Spirit advance from victory to victory serving and praising the Lord. The treasure nuclear submarine had its strong steel hair and also all its armor. It could thus dive into the depths of the sea and withstand the pressure of the ocean. Unfortunately, in a test run in 1963, the engine, the engine stopped working. It sank in the depths of the ocean. The pressure was so strong that the steel twisted. Whoa. He was crushed like an eggshell leaving his 129 passengers to certain death. The Navy began to search with a research vessel stronger than submarines, like a steel wall held by a cable they found the remains 2.5 kilometers deep. But one of the things that surprised them was finding, a, finding fish at that depth. How can that be possible? You, you, you compare the fish with the steel submarine, you know? How can that be possible? They have a secret. They have the same pressure 
within themselves as they experience outside. Uh, that is uh, tremendous, uh, this fish. They have the same pressure within themselves as they experience outside. And that made me remain this marvelous verse from the Bible. First John chapter 4 and verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. This is an amazing Bible verse. And I, I pray that God may me remain this Bible verse always. He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. God is greater and God is with you. God is with our church. We are victorious because Jesus has poured out his spirit in our hearts. Praise the Lord. Rather than relaying on ourselves, we are relaying on the power of God within us to give us the victory. Will you allow God to fulfill his promise in your life? Or will you choose to rely on your own power? Your answer to that question will determine whether you will overcome or not. Let us live every day trusting in the power of God that works in our hearts. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity we have had to worship together today. We praise your name because victory is ours. Thanks to Jesus and your Holy Spirit. May we walk every day from victory to victory. As we leave this place, give us your blessings. Give us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.